Today I want to cover one of my favorite missing 401 cases. But before I get into that, I just want to let my subscribers know that the man responsible for uncovering one of the greatest mysteries of our time, David Pilatus, has his own YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description below. David has some amazing content. His videos are really interesting. Just the other day, he came out with a Bigfoot video that he calls a Bigfoot 101 class, where he goes over some of the most credible sightings and evidence that we have. So make sure to go check it out and subscribe to his channel. Also, The Missing 401 The Hunted, I believe is still free to watch on YouTube. It's definitely worth a watch. Now I'm going to turn this into a series, and over time I'll cover a lot of these cases. But I'm not just going to go over the stories, as so many YouTubers have already covered them. What I want to do is try to figure out what is doing this. So after going over disappearance, we together will try to figure out what or who is responsible. I believe that something paranormal must be going on here, as these disappearances are just so bizarre and sometimes downright terrifying. Today I'm going to go over disappearance that happened in the 1930s. One day, three-year-old Lawrence was driving with his uncle, John, and they were driving to a very remote area in the Nevada desert as John was looking for areas to prospect. Now it wasn't summer, so it wasn't scorching hot. And since they were in the middle of nowhere, John decided that it would be okay to leave Lawrence in the car while he went to go check out a spot for prospecting really quick. And when he got out of the car, he waved to Lawrence to let him know where he was going as he was walking over a hill just a little bit out of sight from the car. Then just a few minutes later while he was walking back, he noticed that the car door was open. But at first he wasn't worried as he wasn't gone for long and there was no place for him really to go. So he figured that Lawrence must be close by. But after looking for a couple minutes and not finding him, he started to panic. So he was yelling at the top of his lungs hoping that he would hear Lawrence reply. But there was nothing but silence. And after looking for a long time, he realized that he had to drive all the way back to town to tell the authorities. Now there was a massive search and the only thing they found was Lawrence's hat. And John now fully believed that Lawrence had to have been abducted. There was just no way that Lawrence could have walked so far away where John couldn't have found him. Plus, Lawrence knew exactly where John was as he waved to Lawrence right before he walked out of sight, and he wasn't even gone for that long. Now, they searched this area for days, but there was just no tracks. There was no trace of Lawrence anywhere. People even started to wonder if it was possible for him to get picked up by an eagle. And the authorities did believe that John was telling the truth as John was freaking out. He was panicked. This was his nephew. And after a couple of days of searching with no luck, the police decided to bring in a renowned Native American tracker. And this Native American could see what no one else could see. He saw tracks and he followed them for miles. Then he came upon a rocky hill, but this hill wasn't very easy to climb, so they had to go get climbing equipment. And as they were climbing up, they couldn't believe what they saw. They saw Lawrence sleeping on a cliff. Now whoever, or whatever took Lawrence, moved a branch from a nearby tree that kept him in place, which was really odd. But thankfully he was okay. Lawrence was missing for days, but somehow he survived the freezing nights. Now this is an amazing missing 401 case, and thankfully Lawrence was okay. The reason I wanted to cover this is according to the details, it's just highly unlikely that a human did this. They were in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing around this area. So why would there be a person in that exact spot without a car? And secondly, there was no way a person could have climbed up that hill carrying a child. And also, why would someone want to abduct a three-year-old, then walk seven miles in the desert? It just doesn't make any sense. But of course it's still possible, it's just highly unlikely. And also John didn't hear any sounds, he wasn't that far away. So what the heck took Lawrence? Now there have been dozens of other similar cases reported throughout the years. And sadly, because these kids are just so young, they can't really explain what happened to them. Sometimes they say that an animal took them, or that they were surrounded by animals. In some cases, it sounded like an animal was protecting them from other animals. And these few lucky kids that were eventually found unharmed, they were found in places that there was just no way they could have got there by themselves. Now in this video, I don't want to talk too much about these other cases, as I will cover them later in the series. But one thing that freaked me out is there have been kids that say they saw something in the trees, or they saw something in the distance that was looking right at them. And these kids just kind of walked over to them as if they were being lured. Then they just vanished. But thankfully in these cases, they were found. But sadly there have been hundreds, or maybe even thousands of kids throughout the world that were never seen again. Now some believe that Bigfoot, or a creature like Bigfoot, is responsible for some of these cases. 
and for good reason. In one case, eyewitnesses stated that while they were staying at a national park, I believe it was Yosemite, they saw an animal moving very fast. At first they thought it was a bear running, but after looking for a while they realized that this was no bear. Whatever this was, was running on two feet and it appeared to be carrying a child over its shoulder. And just a couple hours earlier, a child did go missing. Now, I can't remember where or what Missing 411 show I saw this on, but because of what these eyewitnesses said, I never forgot it. And also, in other Bigfoot abductions, people have said that Bigfoot took them and it carried them over their shoulder. Another interesting thing about the Lawrence abduction is the Native American tracker. How was he able to see what no one else could? And he followed these tracks for seven miles. That is paranormal in itself. Native Americans are very spiritual people and whatever is doing this might be a supernatural being that can shift in and out of our reality, our realm. And that is another video for another day. But anyway, that made me wonder, well, what do Native Americans think about all these disappearances as they have been on this land for thousands of years? And I'm sure different tribes have different beliefs, but one native told David Pilatus that star people are responsible and that it's like a harvest. Now that is really creepy. Basically saying that Earth is like an aquarium at a restaurant, and when an alien orders something, well, there goes another human, along with some random part of a cow. Now that is one horrifying theory, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but it does make me wonder. At one time I was convinced that some sort of large unknown bird was responsible. Well, at least for some of these disappearances, as these kids seem to be taken from the air, then found in places that we know there was just no way they could have got there themselves. But the more I research, the more mysterious this phenomena becomes. And I'm curious to know, what do you guys think is causing this? Now before I go, I want to show you a Bigfoot clip that has been going viral. In Northern California, a farmer, while driving on her property, caught something odd on video. As she was driving around her property, something huge jumped down from a tree and ran on two legs extremely fast, as if whatever this was, was frightened by the oncoming vehicle. In my opinion, this doesn't seem to be a hoax, but I have been wrong before. But this is Northern California, the same location where Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin filmed their famous footage of a Bigfoot walking along a creek. So I'm going to attempt to show you this video that my boss's granddaughter caught up on his property, which is kind of up in the mountains a little bit. Um, you tell me what you think it is. So here it is. Oh, did you see that? We'll do it again. Oh, maybe too fast for you? Okay, the reason why I did this and I stopped it, I slowed it way down, is because you can clearly see that there is something that is jumping out of a tree upright on two legs, running with a quickness, might I add, and disappears so she was doing a quick like snapchat that you know only takes a couple seconds and she didn't notice this until she went back to look at her snapchat and then she was like it what was that so as you can see it's jumping out of the tree running on two feet i mean i'm not ruling anything out looks like bigfoot to me until next time this is paranormal junkie make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned